This week on The Modified World, we have a nice little sit-down talk with Mr. Warren Hiller. You'll want to hear this. So this week on The Modified World, we played host of Mr. Warren Hiller. When you get two guys like us together who just can't shut up, it can kind of run a little long. This is what we bring you. So Warren, can you uh, tell us exactly why are you on this show in the first place? I'm friends with you, of course. Big help. Uh, started piercing in 2001. My uncle was a tattoo artist from little age, grew up around it. Uh, went all over the place, lived in the Caribbean at one point, came back, became a piercer in 2001. Uh, apprenticed under a small shop in Toronto, BDSM, Pagany crowd, a lot of witchcraft, a lot of incense burning. Learning the customer service, be friendly. Long story short, I got hooked up with a man named Tom Brazda. And the man basically blew my mind. Started questioning things. You do it like this, but what about that? There's more to learn. So, talking with Tom, he was like, hey, if you ever want to learn how to really pierce, come see me. All right, so I was like, sure, let's uh, do that. Had a lot of friends, they wanted to come. Started doing some work, listening to Tom, remembering what my old instructor said and went, damn, different ideologies, different thoughts, different trains of thinking. And as I kind of traveled and met a few other piercers in that, I went, wow, there's a lot more that people got in their heads than just what these people say. So I thought, what if I create a forum, a group, for learning? Yeah, because all this stuff was still pre most of the pre big Facebook, social network. pre MySpace, pre all that stuff, and uh, I wanted to keep in touch. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see what their work was like, compare it to mine. And so you created the I the created first the learning forum on BMEZine.com because there was BMEZine, which was all like pictures and experiences and videos and that, but then there was the community within. And once you got into that community, and once you were a verified piercer, once I guaranteed that you were an apprentice and a piercer or anything related to this industry, I'd let you into this forum. Let's talk about setups and aseptic technique and the proper ways to sterilize process your instruments and decontaminate and angles and all of that stuff. So I created that forum and I also created a private portfolio critique. So we could figure out a way and go, okay, every artist has their own little technique, but what are those things that we can unify so that we can figure out if a client can't come see me, I can send them to JC in Ann Arbor if they're going that way and get some good quality work. Right. So started the learning forum and it kind of gained momentum. Got about 400 plus piercers from all over the world. People that you would now be probably looking up to because at this point now they're like 10 year plus professionals with you know, a certain amount of experience behind them. Yeah, I started out really green. I was very young when I started that forum and it was my own personal need to elevate my knowledge and get more and more information. I was a sponge. What is it that you do nowadays? Uh, for a lot of people that don't know and I love to let people know this, just to be on the safe side because hey, this gives me a little bit of credential. Uh, I am a medical device reprocessor for a rather large health facility in Canada. He, he runs the sterilization area at the hospital in Toronto for those of you that don't necessarily have used polysyllabic words. Yeah, I uh, take contaminated items and I make them safe for reuse. When I first started out, I was like, this isn't the way we were, this isn't the way it should be. We were using like antibacterial hand soap and little tiny jewelers, ultrasonics, and soaking it in alcohol and all that. And I was like- For jewelry. For, for, for jewelry and for actual tools, mm -hmm. contaminated tools. After we'd use them, that's how we'd process. As Soon as I got out of my original shop, I went, that can't be right. There's gonna be something else. So I would talk with Tom Brazda. I would talk with some people and I would even look online and figure out what is it that a hospital uses when they deal with bloody, contaminated, soiled, Instruments. This is kind of what led you into your current career. Like once you kind of got out of the body modification industry, you seemed to, you know, it's like, you know, find out more about the scientific ways 
Absolutely. The, I, I the, always I went into it because I felt very zen and peace-like when I would process tools. And I went, I'm tired of piercing, I'm burnt out. Frustrated with the, the people in the industry, frustrated unfortunately with my customers and all that. And I just needed time off. Because I was working about four, 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week. Burned out fast. And I thought, what could I do? What could I better myself? I need to do something. I need to do something that would pay my bills and put food on my plate and make me kind of live a life that I felt I deserved. I always wanted to be healthcare. So you've been doing medical device reprocessing for the last two Year, years? Yeah, almost two years. So as a medical device reprocessor, professional, do you, are you satisfied with what you see for most of the industry's device reprocessing from their sterilization and hygiene protocols? A lot of them are making do, and a lot of them are fumbling along the way. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that they take, f they don't think that they need to do, like logging information. Well, you kind of need to log. If something goes wrong, if your sterilizer is malfunctioned on that one cycle and it failed a spore test, you need to know who you basically touched during, with all those tools on that cycle load, right? Just to understand what you're doing, much like with piercing. You should kind of know a little bit about piercing. Say, well, what would you say would be the solution? for this because I've always felt like I've done a really good job on my device reprocessing and my material handling and all that stuff. At the same time though, you know, naturally I want to keep progressing and doing better. I'm sure that there's got to be something that we can do that's better. And that's what would you suggest for, you know, a practitioner or for somebody who is considering being a practitioner? Mm -hmm. What would you say would be a good core, a way to learn exactly how to properly handle and sterilize and you know transmit your materials and all this stuff. Well, I'm not going to tell all the practitioners and upcoming practitioners and all that to do the many thousands of dollars and hours of training that I did because you don't really need all of that because it covers a lot of scope. It covers hospital sterilization. Yeah, they have and materials we, that we're not going to run into. Yeah, you don't need to worry about climate control and negative pressure and all that type of stuff mm -hmm. because you're not quite a dentist. You're not quite a family doctor. You're a, pa a tattoo artist and you're a piercer. And rightfully so, you deserve that own criteria. So ask questions. Research online, right? And there's even courses you can take online and all that that... In America, most of the training is online mm -hmm. for sterilization. There's a couple states that offer in class. Uh, there's actually some companies out there that do offer sterilization courses. Right? Look into them. Figure out what those are. And always ask questions because the thing is you always want to better yourself. As a piercer, as a sterile tech, we always want to be meeting the minimum standards, but you want to go a little bit above every time. It always starts out small. Small increments, get better, get better, get better. Because if you think you're the best, right off the bat, that's an issue. The online learning is okay, but it's a little bit different than actual technical hands-on experience. That stuff is what really makes you understand it. And uh, the best way for piercers and shop people and all that is to ask the questions. Find the people with the knowledge and ask the questions. What do you feel like the industry is kind of failing on? I I think we're failing on a lot of stuff. Uh, we're kind of going with just, eh, put our heads down to our work. And kind of not being out there and discussing things well. Uh, those, all those Facebook groups on forums and learning and all that, they're great, but without working together and understanding, what's the point? It's just a bunch of gibberish online. You gotta be there for each other. You gotta support each other. You gotta help each other. If someone's in need, help them. If they need to know some knowledge, great. If they need help on placement, great. If you want to say, hey, why don't you come over and do a guest spot? And I think it'd be hard pressed to find somebody who doesn't agree that the body modification artists, whether they're piercers, tattooers, scars, whatever, yeah. you know, really need to do a better job of standing together in solidarity. Yeah. Throw out the ego, throw out the arrogance, throw out the self-centered, absorbed ways. The grudges. The grudges. Just put things under and just be like, you know what? You're a piercer, I'm a piercer. I may not like you as a person, but damn, I respect your work. Well, we got, well, we got to work together too to make sure it stays a viable thing going on and further. I'll tell you, for somebody who's burned out, 
You sure do speak awful eloquently. Do you, uh, do you feel like you're going to be a medical re device reprocessor forever, or do you see yourself ever picking back up the needles? Well, that's the one gripe I've had over since leaving professional piercing a couple years ago. I get statements all the time going, man, I remember when Warren Hiller was a piercer. Really? My friend Chris Jennings said it best. Was? Hell, he still is a piercer. Once a piercer, always a piercer. It's like the mafia. You don't, you don't, get, don't out. get out. Right? You can't. Because everybody wants to pull you in. Every now and then you get this message going, man, I remember when you did that and it was awesome. If I help, I help. If I don't, you don't want my help, I, I'm okay with that. But don't denounce it. But at the same time, will I pick up a needle again? Maybe. If the, the price is right and the location is nice. Because a lot of times, a lot of us piercers, we feel we have to bend to the will of the shop owner. And in some ways, it's you a give and take. Do. You kind of do. But at the same time, speaking as a shop owner, you kind of have to bend to the will of your employees. Do. Exactly. So what a lot of piercers I want to try and get into their heads is, you got a skill. You're bringing that skill to the shop. So you should be like, hey, this is what I bring to the table. What do you bring to the table? Well, and that's something that, I always, that I've, I've felt like has been important since we started this whole web series is to foster an environment where people can get out there and speak their opinions, mm -hmm. you know, without fear of retribution, without fear of like, oh, the political ramifications of it. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I don't really care either. There's really not anything that anybody's going to do mm -hmm. to dissuade me from trying to educate the public. You know, I know I'm going to say things that are going to embarrass companies. I know that I'm going to wind up saying things that are going to contradict the party line. But at the same time, I feel like I have a responsibility to the people. And it's not just America, folks. And it's not just Canada, man. I've got a tattoo guy in Iraq who's the only tattoo artist in his town that's ever existed and is trying to learn and has nobody to learn from and turns to the Internet. So, I mean, we have a greater responsibility then to an organization or to a, a, a codified set of laws in a particular scrap of land on this planet. I'm looking at it more as a deal of the whole exactly. world and not just the industry but the scene and what can we do to help people. Yeah, because you know? America for a while was different than Canada. Mm -hmm. You guys had all these other companies that were really high end and all that and then you come to Canada, we don't have that. And you find that the rest of the world doesn't have it for the most part. And you find a lot of the world doesn't have it. Yeah, I'm getting, after doing my little, my little videos about quality jewelry, I've been getting a lot of people from overseas, from, you know, European Union countries and stuff, not just emerging economies, but like first world economies that are like, we can't get this type of stuff here. Yeah, and it's slowly sifting out. Push it forward. And I think that's what, one of the things that we're all trying to do here. I mean, I'm trying to help disseminate information to the to the YouTube audience or the online video audience. Show professionals the professional side and show the customers there's more to just piercing and tattooing than just walking into a shop and just sitting in a chair and filling out a little piece of paper, possibly sometimes filling it out, so possibly not. Showing you what you need to look for. Showing you what you need to look for, the sit downs and the, the talk throughs. Yeah. Like every piercing I did did 30, 40 minutes, if not more. Sometimes took less, but I gave that time and the customers deserve that time. And the piercers deserve to understand that. And let's work together. We need to. So that was our show this week. I hope you learned something, possibly had some sort of light shed on the situation. If you haven't subscribed yet, you really ought to so that you never miss a video. We do this every Friday around 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And we give away swag to engage subscribers. So to let me know that you're actually paying attention, leave me a comment in the section down below letting me know. What did you think of Mr. Warren Hiller and the points he made? Let me know. And of course, share this video on your Facebook, your Tumblr, your Twitter, Google Plus if you have one. Because we need the support. And we will see you next Friday at 7 for another episode of The Modified World.